Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Joy Allen's JL249. This is a digital microscope which has a pretty impressive 10 inch IPS LCD screen which is rather large and allows you to more clearly see whatever object you're trying to magnify. This can be a good idea if you are trying to get a close up, if you're a DIY enthusiast trying to look at different parts of let's say computers, circuitry boards, or of course for other science and laboratory purposes as well. It includes three lens. The first one, lens L, claims to get 60 to 240 times magnification, which they claim is going to be suitable for soldering and repair jobs. The next one here is called lens A for observing coins, plants, stones, which has a little bit stronger strength, up to 720 times of magnification. And then we have lens D for biological slide observation, which is the strongest strength, getting up to a crazy 2,040 times of magnification. And this unit can be found for under 180 bucks, so it's still a bit pricier than some of the other models. I will mention that this company does offer a variety of other options, some of them which have a smaller uh, digital display that you can pick, say, 5 inches or 6 inches, and they can be found for around the $100 price range. On here, you are paying just a little bit more for a bigger unit that has that 10-inch external display. Inside here, we have just a quick user guide that tells us how to very quickly assemble the entire thing together, which will look like this. The arm can be slightly adjusted in terms of the positioning, and it also tells us in a few steps how we can snap on the different holders. Here we have, of course, just the external display. It reminds me of a photo frame or perhaps a DVD player from back in the day, and we have just a few controls at the bottom for power, navigating the menus, snapping images once we are mounted and ready to go. The back just looks like this, so pretty simple stuff. Additional micro SD card slot, as well as even a external micro HDMI port can be found on the monitor for linking it onto a TV, even bigger screen, and powered by looks like micro USB. Accessories are inclusive of an external remote that takes two AAA batteries, so you can use it to snap images, magnify, even if you're further away from the unit, which is pretty neat. We have additional screws and mounting brackets, as well as a little tweezer and some sample slides, including ones which are from a pine stem. Here's one which is the epidermis of an onion, one here of a honeybee wing, as well as honeybee worker. So in here we have also the different lens. Uh, so for instance, we thought lens L, which is the one that is kind of the least powerful. Each of these will have slightly different magnification strength. Kind of interesting how this entire thing is modular and you can just snap them into pieces. This one is the D lens, which is going to be a little bit more powerful in terms of strength. 32 gigabyte micro SD card is separately housed. Down below here, we've also got some of the different arms, which are all constructed out of aluminum alloy. And we have also a little holder or box here, which you can use to also put in the different samples and slides. And down below here, we have basically the bottom section of the microscope, along with the additional micro to full-size HDMI cable. And this is kind of the power adapter. So again, micro USB to just a USB type A is how it can be operated. You can plug it into either a computer, a power bank to then flick it on. The entire base is made of aluminum alloy along with all of the parts on here, plus the arms as well. So everything here feels quite weighted and professional. Additional kind of mounting brackets and arms, again, all made out of metal. So here's the fully assembled result, taking about five minutes to put together. One thing I will say though is the part that actually took the longest, surprisingly, was these two little prongs, which are meant to hold the samples or glass slides when you pop it onto the base. But because there is no screwdriver that's included, you have to kind of hunt for one that works with these screws. So that's one thing which I think they should include as part of the accessory to make it easier to add that final step. But nonetheless, the overall result is relatively simple to put together. As far as this display is concerned, it looks decent since it is an IPS LCD screen, viewing angles are relatively generous, and it gets decently bright. Definitely you're able to have a much bigger view of what you are looking at compared to the tiny details down below here. 
And what's nice is this entire design has a very nice hinge, which is articulated. It's easy to push the angle forward and backwards, as you can see there, like you would on a computer monitor display. And you can also easily adjust and rotate the lens here back and forth, which contains the camera sensor, uh, so it's easy to pop in and out. And that's really why they get you two USB cables, because you can detach this monitor from the entire thing and use it as kind of a mobile microscope in your hands, as long as you're connected to a power bank that is. The overall hinge here also houses the place where you can actually rotate on the lens as you can see there to make things in and out of focus depending on how far away you are from your object. The LED lights as you can see there are also quite easy to maneuver and position around and located on the base you also find this remote control which you can use to tap once to turn the entire thing on or off as well as control the brightness of the lamp just by tapping on the keys here to make it dimmer and brighter. Overall not bad at all in terms of the quality of the image that we are seeing and if I wanted to I can also tap here just to capture an image and it gets saved onto the SD card. And tapping on the menu key here we can also adjust some properties whether it's looking back at the different footage that you've taken or going back and forth between video recording. As you can see there we have five hours left on the 32 gigabyte card or go into the photo taking modes which has more of a 4 by 3 aspect ratio by default and we can then loop back again the up and down arrow keys can be used to further zoom in and out using the digital magnification so i can use this and i can actually go in even more see additional details of the metal as well as the circuitry uh, showing just a lot of again detail that you're able to make out capture the process of exploring around and then view it back through a us quarter which has been further magnified and we can make out some additional details details. Of course, I can play around the settings to make it even better in terms of the strength of magnification using some of the other included lens that you have on board. But this is already getting us a pretty interesting uh, result using this default kind of weakest magnification. This is kind of the intensity that you can expect. Much better, of course, than any macro lens on a smartphone can deliver. I will also mention that if you are connecting it by USB to your computer, there is a companion software that you can install for Windows, which allows you to also record and capture images directly from your computer as well. I can actually rotate on this section here, as you can see, to further move the display higher or lower, basically changing the distance of the lens from the base. As I switch out one of the lens, this is the part where I think maybe could be a little bit more elegant in the sense that you do have to unscrew these two sides uh, as opposed to something that can be perhaps a little bit more convenient if they just snap it into place uh, using magnets, for instance. All right, so a couple of remarks on the highest magnification lens mode is that, again, that distance away for the focal length is only four to five millimeters. So as a result, this one is gonna be the closest to your subject, almost touching it, but you can further use the arm to move it higher and lower depending on the position. You'll also need the little box that comes included to get you the optimal height away from the lens in this highest magnification mode. And perhaps most importantly, the gooseneck LED lights are not going to be very effective in this mode because it's concentrated on such a tiny subject. And that's why this particular box, aside from acting as a height adjustment, also contains a separate LED source which is on the inside and shines out, making it illuminated perfectly when you're looking at the samples. It usually requires the most patience as well in terms of finding your subject as you're moving it around, aligning things, and then zooming in. But ultimately the result is actually quite satisfying uh, with all of the crazy colors from the cell that you can further make out sliced in these incredible views. So here is another close-up of a honeybee's uh, leg and you can tell all the tiny hair bristles on the leg of the bee zoomed into this incredible amount of detail. Something as commonplace as an onion you can make out all the individual cells and it just looks a lot more interesting when you are zooming in. And this final sample here is a honeybee wing. You can tell a lot of these also tiny hair follicles as you are just exploring these macroscopic details. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of this Joy Allen's 249S, this 2400 times magnification lens system with a 10 inch display, which is very customizable in terms of movement, plenty of lens options to pick from when it comes to using it for DIY or more serious um, actual biology related cases. You can use this and it can capture those moments using the SD card, which is quite handy. Overall, the entire solution I think is pretty well put together, including the lighting, the capabilities here, and the fact the entire thing just operates using a standard type A USB is also quite convenient. 
You can check out additional details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.